Okay, what the heck just happened with the stock of Lamb Research, the semiconductor equipment maker that got slammed after reported a seemingly strong quarter last night? For those of you who don't remember, Lamb Research was in the process of buying semiconductor equipment fellow traveler KLA Tancor. Boy, we love that deal. Earlier this month, though, Justice Department blocked the deal. They thought it was too anti-competitive. Still, the market didn't seem all that upset. Lamb stock jumped 4% when the deal fell apart. But so then, what happened today? Why did the stock get taken to the woodshed, falling nearly $3 or 2.8%? Okay, last night, Lamb reported a solid three-cent earnings beat off of a buck seventy-eight basis with inline revenue and much better than expected earnings guidance for the next quarter. Initially, the stock jumped on the news as I thought it should, but this morning it gave up those gains, slid into the red. Reason? Well, I can only spot two issues. First, the forecast for equipment related to DRAMs, a kind of memory chip, was soft, or at least people said it was, and some are worried that demand for Lamb's products might be approaching, here's a dangerous word, a peak. Second, management still hasn't presented a long-term plan for what they're going to do now the KLA 10 core deals off, although we'd likely hear about that from the company when it holds its analyst day a month from now. In the end, I think this pullback may be the terrific buying opportunity for a high-quality stock into weakness. Let's dig deeper with Martin Ansis. He's the straight-shooting president of Lamb Research. Find out more about the quarter and the company's prospects. Mr. Ansis, welcome back to Man Money. Thank you. It's been a while. Good to be back. All right, so Martin, I got a, I, I went through everything, and this is one of those things where you start making your calls because I didn't see anything negative, and people are saying, "No, Jim, Jim, listen to me. It's the peak." And I said, "I think Martin addressed that point." And they said, "No, it's the peak." Okay, so here we are. I just need to ask you: when you get that kind of comment, what do you tell people? I tell people that I, that we're focused on the long-term opportunity. Uh, to innovate for the success of our customers in the semiconductor industry and create long-term value for our shareholders. And, you know, there's a very compelling track record for the company now. Uh, we are about to record our fifth straight year of growth. We have a CAGR of revenue growth of 18% over that period. To your point, we just uh, met or exceeded our uh, expectations for September and surprised uh, to almost 40 cents on EPS for the December quarter. So the basic headlines uh, are very strong for the company, and certainly our outlook for calendar 17 is that our customers spend more money on equipment, uh, and we think there are some tailwinds specific to our company. And longer term, there's just too much going on in the semiconductor industry in terms of opportunity for innovation. Uh, we're very excited about the future of the company and the industry as a whole. Now, we did see you on uh, November 6 of 2015. Right when the deal was announced, and I, I know I, you know, I applauded the deal. I thought it was a great idea. And you said that you had an opportunity in the last 10 days to be able to visit with most of our key customers around the world. And so far, I'm very pleased with the response from them. Uh, did that yeah. not get communicated to the uh, antitrust authorities? You know, it's, it's uh, not the most transparent process, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sorry to tell you. Uh, but uh, I did spend a lot of time, we spent time as a company, you know, ahead of this deal, uh, getting our customers invested in success. And throughout the last 12 months, um, uh, I'm pleased to say the majority of our customers were absolutely invested, neutral at a minimum, positive uh, in many cases. Right. And certainly, Lam, and Re Lam Research and KLA Tencore combined validated the opportunity. Very disappointing outcome. Um, the objectives uh, for the company still remain in many respects. There's a value okay. proposition for process and process control, which has different strategies to execute now. All right. Now, uh, Samsung's got is widely known to have some problems with the Galaxy, and they may have. The, looks like it's billions of dollars. I see Korea having a big chunk of your business. Should we be worried about Samsung, which is the largest buyer of semi equipment company in the world, that they just may have to cut back because of problems with the Galaxy? Uh, with the you know, no uh, Galaxy, I got to be specific. You know, uh, you know, the, it's obviously unfortunate uh, for for Samsung to be working through the issues. And I think, like every uh, supplier of uh, of Samsung, the industry, we're invested in supporting them and wish them every success uh, in their recovery plans. You know, the reality of the semiconductor industry today is, uh, you know, there are a very diverse set of drivers. Uh, we have engagements across the full portfolio of customers in semiconductor industry. And the outlook we gave you uh, yesterday and the rest of the investment community yesterday for stronger spending in Canada 17 obviously incorporates the best knowledge we have, including uh, in the subject that you just, uh, you just Excellent. referenced. Now, how about this gigantic cash position? Where does it go? Well, uh, uh, to your point, we, uh, we performed $5.8 billion of cash. The, the basic uh, headline for the company is, uh, is, a, is a constancy. We are investing in the profitable growth of our company as a matter of priority. And when we have cash, which is excess to that need, uh, returning excess cash to shareholders. We've been obviously uh, focused on accumulating cash for the mm -hmm. purposes of using that uh, in the KLA 10 core transaction. Uh, to your point in introduction, November 18th, 
Uh, we intend to communicate uh, our plans, not just on capital distribution, but, but revise our long-term financial model and talk about the strategic growth opportunities for the company, okay. uh, independent of KLA deal. Uh, one of the things that I find confusing, we're just talking about with Skyworks Solutions, is th there's a di there is a kind of a disconnect. The analysts want to know about the next 90 days. But it is very clear that over the next four or five years, you're going to have is, is a radical transformation in the semiconductor industry, and you can't make the kinds of chips we're imagining without LAM. Should we stop thinking about this thing as peak trough, peak trough? Um, I, I think you should. I, I think the word of cyclicality um, is, uh, is long since gone. This is a consolidated industry. Um, uh, silicon, the, the integrated circuit, is at the very foundation of the tech economy on a global basis. You know, the reality of semiconductors today is the industry touches every single person on the planet. Um, and our customers aspire to change the world. Uh, no longer is the definition of success about improving the performance of a chip and lowering cost. It's about delivering climate control. It's delivering about predictive medicine. It's delivering transportation solutions, solving global gridlock, automated cars. And if we have time, it's about making our, our lives of fun more exciting with virtual reality and Pokemon Go as well. So there's a tremendous appetite for enabling uh, the tech economy. Silicon and the advancement of a semiconductor roadmap is at the origin of that. And LAM Research is one of the primary enablers of 3D device architecture and shrink with multi-patterning solutions. We have the right products at the right time. More, we don't have products that are not central to the enablement of the semiconductor vision. So uh, we're very excited about the future of the company. Well, I am too, and I'm tired of hearing peak. I understand the analysts want to play that game, but I think the people who have been with us recommending this stock and your predecessor company for years and years and years have done much better than those constantly calling or crying wolf of a peak. Thank you so much, Martin Nances, president and CEO of Lamb Research. Good to see you, sir. Thank you, Jim. Guys, look, people love to call peaks and troughs even when there's secular growth. And, and Lamb's about secular growth. Mad Money is back in. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.